a good morning and welcome from Chile, Vancouver, Canada, or those in North America. We have a lot of visitors from Europe all the way to Mumbai and uh, Singapore, and some from, from Australia, Western Australia. Today we have a special uh, occasion to open Advanced Diamond Academy and Gemstone Academy, second lecture. First one was end of February by John Chapman on how to use advanced instruments, principle of advanced instruments. And today it's about comparing portable instruments, and some of them are a little bit more than portable, uh, with my collection of uh, advanced uh, uh, diamonds, natural, treated, and synthetic. As you probably know, most of you, I'm a, a gemologist and geologist. Uh, also had a chance to finish uh, advanced university uh, diploma, University of Nantes, and uh, on topic of uh, HPHT diamond treatments. How I came up to the idea for this lecture? Uh, I do a lot of workshops uh, for last 15 years uh, and 20 years I'm lecturing on topic of diamonds and gemstones. And my last big trips 2019 were in Australia. Uh, you can see bottom left where people ask me in Brisbane and uh, Melbourne and Perth, uh, what do you think about uh, this instrument like a gemologist or what do you think about a presidium instrument? What do you think about uh, Sherlock Holmes? And I realized that I don't use uh, many of these in my laboratory. So I, I kind of borrow them or, or some of them uh, I purchase or, or I have a, uh, selling some of them. So I decided to, to test them and uh, show you the results. And uh, this is a second part of Advanced Diamond Academy. Uh, we have uh, 10 lectures. You'll see later who are the other uh, seven speakers. So what we'll cover today, approximately one hour, and then we have half an hour for questions. Please uh, uh, text the questions at Q&A on the bottom, uh, better than uh, doing in chat. It will be easier for me. Unfortunately, my colleague Dusan Simic, uh, co-author of the book Laboratory Grown Diamonds, uh, could not join us today. He had a very light operation. Uh, he's like me, a gemologist for 25 years, and uh, he likes gemstones so much and rocks that he has a rock in his uh, kidney, so he has the operation today. But I'm sure he will listen to us later. So uh, I have a little bit of very, very small background because many of you listened to my lectures before. I will focus on study of 12 portable instruments. And I will divide them in three big groups. Uh, one group instrument who are screening uh, uh, diamonds, one who doing screening and partial detection and those who are more doing detection and referring. You can see the group them in three colors, blue, uh, pink, and green. And there are nine producers. I'll just list them uh, quickly. Presidium from Singapore, Gem Gemlogis uh, Hong Kong, Gemological Research Industry Inc., uh, my company from Vancouver, Geometrics uh, Sweden, uh, OG Israel, DRC India USA, Geometrics Australia, GIA USA, and Medjilabs Finland and Italy. And we'll see more later. Uh, producers from these diamonds are coming from many countries, but probably you know that major producer is China, more than 56%, and mostly HPHT grown, but also CVD. India is growing as a producer and focusing more on CVD diamonds. Those who listen to our webinars uh, could uh, witness that by lectures from Malai Hirani from India. Uh, and also, they also, of course, they're growing them in the US. Uh, Singapore, uh, Russia, and Europe. Uh, I was visiting facility even in, in Israel, South Korea, many places in the world. What is important that many of them coming now, not only as a loose, but uh, in jewelry, challenges to not always to identify center one, but the side ones. And this is one of four carat one that uh, was relatively easy to identify as a, as a CVD grown, but uh, now they're mixing them on the side uh, not only natural, I've seen yesterday even sapphire of 11 karat sapphire with the male and lab-grown diamonds, which is unusual, but happens. And uh, in this case, they're natural male, uh, they do all kinds of combinations. I do test them and appraise them with my colleague Angelina Yip. So that's to remind you on the colors and connection between color of diamonds and types. This is very important because many instruments that we see today working on coralless diamonds, they're mostly uh, type 2A lab-grown could be HPHT or CVD grown. There are some instruments uh, for more detection instruments, more spectrometers that will work on colored and they could be yellow type 1B or mixture of 1A and 1B. It has some nitrogen, usually the single nitrogen. 
These stones, yellow could be irradiated, treated to become red or pink, like this stone on the right, or it could be type 2B that has boron as impurity, HPHT grown, and uh, quite rare, but still present, CVD grown could be type 2A without boron. They have a, a hydrogen and silicon. And uh, every year, uh, they're bigger and bigger in size. Uh, used to be one carat, two carats, now very common, up to five, six carats. I've seen uh, uh, 10 carats uh, polished HPHT grown and even 20 carat colored HPHT grown at the shows uh, around the world. So this is very important uh, to understand uh, this uh, slide because I try to simplify for you uh, tests that I did last year on seven instruments. And last uh, two months, uh, I was uh, had time to add another five, so 12 different instruments. Uh, laboratory, of course, we have other instruments like uh, spectrometers, infrared, visible, photoluminescence. We can detect uh, all of them. But what uh, a regular gemologist, a jeweler, appraiser, uh, dealer can do, I divide them in two groups uh, standard screening and detection portable instruments. And there are two or three methods that I know. Of course, there's some that may be combination of methods or undisclosed. Transparency to short UV light is one from uh, Presidium, actually, two of them. Diamond Screener 2 and ARI, and VISTA. Then we have a characteristic fluorescent phosphorescent reaction. We call it photoluminescence, any kind of emission of light, long UV, 354, or close to that, or short UV, and different filters that, uh, for example, GEMPEN is using. Uh, PL Jewelry Inspector is based on that, GEMPEN, Diatru, J Screen, and Mini Screen. Then we have more gemological equipment that I am a big fan and uh, most of you who took my workshop knows my little uh, kit that has uh, almost everything there, but in form that gemologists can use, like a portable polariscope uh, loop, of course, for if stones are included, and the fluorescence mini PL inspector. Uh, then we have a, a two or three or many instruments that I did not cover here because I couldn't get hold of it. Uh, though my client has it seen detect, I couldn't be couldn't test it uh, before this lecture. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, I've seen it at the shows, but uh, uh, I could not get it uh, from them. Uh, there are instruments uh, they've used in the laboratory, like uh, spectrometers uh, from uh, different companies. Uh, I use uh, infrared from Nicolette, there's a Brooker. There is an instrument that will be covered by uh, other speakers, like Thomas Henschwag, about DFI, deep UV laser he makes and uses in his laboratory in Liechtenstein, or the Beers Diamond View, and many, many other instruments. There are 50 maybe instruments on the market. What I'll cover under advanced detection referring are ID100, EXA, and INSPECTRUM. This is what I will cover today. Hopefully, time will allow that. So this is a chart uh, published many years ago in uh, Guide Magazine. It's still valid. I'm keep a little bit adjusting it, but but want to emphasize on these three groups. One group I already mentioned, it's uh, uh, screening instruments that will screen type of diamonds uh, to be more precise to be more accurate is not only types. We are screening, are there are low nitrogen diamonds, what is mostly type 2A, what is quite rare in nature, maybe less than 2%, but also some types like 1AB, capital B, that could have low nitrogen. Why we are screening this? Because mostly natural diamonds are type 1A, maybe 97, 98%, and could be rare types 1B, 2A, 2B. It's very different with the lab-grown diamonds, HPHT grown, they're mostly 2A if they're colorless, or if they're yellow, or other colors, 1B. And mostly CVD are 2A, and very rare it could be 2B. This is the screening instruments in blue. Then big group of instruments, we have like four or five instruments that are based on fluorescence, or photoluminescence, or phosphorescence, we call it one group. Uh, because we have difference in, uh, in fluorescence reaction, colors and intensity. A uh, big difference is the short UV is stronger than HPHT grown diamond, and they usually phosphoresce up to one minute. CVD, very rare fluoresce, could fluoresce, and phosphoresce, sorry, phosphoresce, uh, could be the same. It's more tricky, but it's possible also to use this technique. And natural diamonds, uh, I've said this many times, if you have diamonds, medium blue, strong blue fluorescent, long UV light, is for sure natural diamond. Uh, it's very good screening test. I'm using it a lot, and uh, before I do even uh, uh, grading or other tests. And this is impurities. Uh, this is instruments that are more advanced, more expensive. I just covered two or three today, but more will listen later from other speakers. Because impurities are different. 
even if you have semi purity like nitrogen, position is different. And we can see this with advanced uh, spectrometers like infrared, visible, uh, and photoluminescence spectrometers. This is a collection that uh, those who took my workshops probably know this collection. Uh, it's around 55 diamonds and seven imitations, 30 boxes. And you can see in the bottom, uh, I did not include only coralless on purpose because uh, some other tests, like a sure test, uh, uh, DPA did only coralless uh, because some instruments work on color. I want to see uh, limitations of each instrument. I include some colored, not so many, but uh, definitely some colored and a mixture of natural HPHT grown and CVD grown. And in the book that will come uh, by September, I will cover all this in details and you will see results. Now we'll just uh, go instrument by instrument and uh, I won't be lazy because I have them on the back, all of them. I will show you how they look because most of them are here in my laboratory. You can see how they look, uh, my laboratory very busy with the instruments in the back. So the first one uh, that was tested also by the short program DPA is a uh, presidium from instrument uh, diamond screener type two just to remind you that uh, uh, probably you remember in 2000 when first hpht enhanced uh, type 2 diamonds came on the market we need to screen them somehow and one uh, company sscf lab uh, divided this type 2 a spotter that, that is based on transparency to uv light how it works uh, you can put diamond on the, on the bottom and there's a phosphorescent screen on the other side and if diamond is low nitrogen diamond, like type 2A or 1AB, it will light will pass through the stone and we can see emission of green uh, phosphorescence on the screen. This is mean the diamond is a low nitrogen diamond. In this case, probably 2A, maybe 1AB. This instrument works very similar on this principle. Uh, uh, separate, you can see in the middle, uh, natural diamonds from type 2 diamonds. So it's most probably these diamonds could be synthetic, but also there's a chance to be low nitrogen diamonds also you can do this is a uh, loose here you can do uh, rings and i now include them uh, on my instrument part of the website uh, selling them as well so this is a dpa uh, analysis they said that it's uh, quite good to uh, identify uh, natural diamonds as natural and won't identify lab grown as natural which is very important uh, but referring around 15 percent by them I think it's a, more about 10. This is my on, on my samples at least. And I think it's quite easy to use and a good screen device, good in jewelry stores to quickly know what you're doing, uh, but still need some re heads, referrals, we need to be some additional testing after this additional first test. This is uh, how it looks on the rings. Maybe not uh, so easy to do mounted on this one, but that's why uh, they came out with another instrument uh, a few months ago, Ari, also the company uh, Presidium. Uh, limitations of both instruments that goes up to J color, uh, so not for fancy colors, but this area is good also for uh, uh, mosaics, what is very important for uh, our diamond trade. So similar principle as uh, as previous one, uh, absorption transparency, and uh, very easy to use. What is good has a little tip uh, at the end. I will show you in a second, and you can uh, put it. Uh, directly to the ring or, or a piece of jewelry and takes really uh, three to five seconds uh, quite fast faster than uh, than the presidium uh, spotter and uh, very light uh, so in my in my calculations it's a little bit better more accuracy seven maybe percent to ten all depends of course on the experienced user and uh, how you are careful not to touch the uh, here's how it looks uh, very like a pen very small very light to touch uh, the gold, you have to touch the diamond, and uh, you can do a lot of stones uh, per hour, as I mentioned here. And I can detect mosaic. This is uh, different, but not CZ. We have to make sure we deal with diamond or as mosaic. Another instrument that uh, I borrowed from the local appraiser who took my uh, workshop here. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, I train locally uh, now that I cannot travel. So it's uh, called Vista. It has a little bit different design, uh, not so bad. Uh, you can put rings, you can put uh, 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 loose diamonds. And uh, this is what they said, screen earth mind and potential. What is uh, really true? Because at the end, it says type 2A, 1AB includes HPHT and CVD. This is the option here. 
that uh, you can be aware it's possible to be CVD or HPHD, but still you have to do additional tests. It's a screening device. Uh, it is detected uh, around 7.5% by DPA, uh, a sure program, and I, I, I'm very close to this 7 to 10% uh, on my uh, stones. I'm not uh, selling all these instruments, as, but you can get them for 5.99 approximately. And uh, this is the price of these screening instruments, approximately $600 up to $1,000, $1,100. So uh, now we can go into gemological instruments uh, that are very, very uh, inexpensive, but uh, need some training. And this is what is my goal the last 10, 15 years. I think I have 1,300 uh, attendees uh, in over 50 workshops in 17 countries teaching this technique. This is not my technique, but it, it, it's known, but I apply it. Uh, to gemology and diamonds, uh, we can put the two cross polarized filters on microscope. We can put my, or what I'm using, not mine, but uh, in my kit, little uh, portable uh, polariscope and look uh, diamond between cross polarized filters. In this case, uh, you, you can see the pattern in a diamond. Uh, this is what we uh, published many years ago, you know, second edition. On the left is type 2 a diamond, we call the tummy pattern. On the right is more uh, natural looking type 1 a diamond. It has more stronger interference colors, more impurities. It's 3D effect. You have to rotate the diamond. This is called anomalous double refraction uh, for diamond, because even if it's refractive, some directions has light is traveling uh, faster or, or, or slower. Very important because uh, diamond that are without strain of very, very weak strain, like this one on the right or bottom, is HPHT grown diamond. So this is very good technique uh, to screen them beside inclusions. This one has metallic inclusions. Of course, we can do infrared and other tests. And this is a, a pictures for Dushan Simic. He did a lot of uh, tests. This is how it looks, little uh, portable polariscope. Uh, basically, with the portable light, it's very inexpensive uh, set to get. $125 and very uh, effective. Uh, I practice to do every stone uh, on my microscope with this, not because uh, even if I know it's natural, just to, to see better pattern to, to understand, because sometimes uh, uh, we learn a lot from these uh, experiments. Uh, so this is uh, from our book, uh, Laboratory Grown Diamonds. Uh, some of you have it. Uh, that Dushan did, you see here, uh, eight stones around. He has a similar pattern, more crossed. You can see how they're crossing. And in the center one has a, a lines parallel to the table. Very interesting picture. Why? Because uh, based on experiments and, and knowledge, uh, this one is not HPHT treated. It's as grown. All these are treated. Why I'm showing you this? Just to show you that uh, sometimes this pattern could look similar to type 2A pattern in natural diamond. Very similar, but never the same. Uh, we who see a lot of diamonds, we can see that this pattern is much stronger than type 2A. And uh, with careful examination, that's why practice is very important. If you, if you uh, get in habit to check each stone every day, you can do 10, 15 stones a day, or 20, depends how many you're appraising or, or testing, and be, be becoming expert, like uh, Dushan and myself doing a lot of stones. So we, we, we can see more this pattern and become more uh, accurate. So this is how it looks, a combination of pattern and uh, cross polarized filters. Uh, this is a type 1A diamond, natural, very typical fluorescence, strong blue, weak blue. Even uh, pink diamonds could have this fluorescence. It's still natural. Uh, pattern could be similar because we're not talking about color. I'm talking about what is inside the diamond. Uh, this is internal uh, strain. Type 2 diamond is a little bit different. You can see natural. This is two naturals. And this is a uh, fluorescence stronger than the short UV. No, no pattern. CVD, not always like this. But this one is definitely stronger short UV. You can see something is very similar. And pattern is more parallel or uh, like in this uh, uh, picture on the right. And this is also on my website. Uh, instrument I'm using a lot as a first screening instrument is fluorescence. Uh, you can use a UV light, but uh, I like a portable one. This is for loose, uh, for geometrics. This is for jewelry. He has a tray. It's also part of the kit. Uh, you can get this as a part of the kit. It looks like this, uh, very simple. You can put one stone at a time or few if they're very small. Or they come like this. So they're much more bigger. You can see a much bigger opening. You can put bigger pieces of jewelry. Now, uh, uh, Geometrix was uh, smart to put a little tray. You can turn around tray and, and make it uh, uh, for loose parcels or, or for rings. Uh, and big, big application that you can put phone uh, on the top and take a picture. 
And this is my biggest uh, seller, actually. I can say one of my best selling instruments, the Jewelry Inspector, uh, selling for five years now since a conference in Spain, Mediterranean Conference 2016. So I, I put together this analysis because uh, PL Inspector is part of the synthetic kit, and also Jewelry Inspector is very similar to PL Inspector just doing bigger uh, stones or jewelry. It could be used on gemstones. You can, uh, if you're careful, you can detect also uh, cubic zirconia and uh, other gemstones. It's not tested by sure program. In my opinion, it's uh, it all depends on, on the user, of course, but uh, five to 10%, it's really uh, you have to do for the testing. And uh, it's uh, you can create your own database and be very uh, good with this. Uh, a lot of people sending me images or, or drone Chapman and we try to help them is not always easy based on image only, but uh, it's good to combine two or three instruments. This is what uh, my point is here. If you have uh, some stones, uh, CVD that uh, do not fluoresce, it has very typical pattern. So this is a, a no need to do a spectroscopy, but sometimes, of course, you will see later, I need to do spectroscopy. So next uh, uh, instrument uh, that uh, who attend the uh, April 1st webinar, uh, so it, it's a gem pen. Uh, now it looks like this. It's a really big pen, and you have two two filters on the bottom. You can exchange them. Actually, three filters. It comes with a package of three filters. And what is new now? They make this a uh, uh, little dark uh, room. What is really useful? Uh, why? Because you can make a pictures and you can see better uh, UV reaction. Uh, my lab here usually I, I turn off the light. I'll work in the dark, but those who are working in, in a appraisal office or in the retail stores has a lot of light. And how it works, uh, it's based on filter technology. They have two different filters. Uh, you can see it here. Number one correspond approximately uh, to, to what we call short UV light. And number four uh, approximately uh, to a long UV light and then two, three filters between. This is a typical reaction of natural diamond that is more, that is blue basically. And this is a, a first test what you can do on loose or on jewelry. And if it's CVD, uh, the different colors, but not exactly blue, more like a greenish blue or orange or greenish or violetish. And very, very typical uh, green blue color of HPHT ground diamond that will phosphorus as well. Uh, for those who didn't have a chance to attend, uh, I would recommend to go on YouTube channel uh, Branco Gems and A, G, and J, and watch this YouTube video, and uh, also uh, it will be on our uh, website. So this is, uh, you can see more uh, videos and more uh, practical information. Uh, I just could not uh, show more in this short presentation. But this is how it looks, for example, my stone that is uh, from grown in Russia. I was there at NDT factory in St. Petersburg. So what to do with stone is DFIF. You cannot use a, a loop, of course. So fluorescence is very important. This is phosphorescence of the little uh, diamond uh, that definitely uh, tell you it's it's HPHT grown. DPA put five to 15% uh, referral or accuracy. I'm more to, uh, five to eight, because it all depends on the user. Uh, I put these percentages here for me using it uh, with experience. It's very nice design, uh, award-winning. And I think uh, uh, some people who are using it, I just got a few orders from New York uh, last year. They like it because they can, you do bracelets, necklaces, and very fast to go around uh, the bigger piece of jewelry uh, compared to some regular UV box, for example, that is uh, quite awkward. Okay, next one, uh, I don't have it here in the laboratory to show you uh, my client across the street uh, using it uh, dealer. It's diet through uh, instrument from OG Israel. It is based on photoluminescence or fluorescence and uh, phosphorescence. You can see here my collection. I put natural diamond in one row. I put two of them that are HPHT treated just to see what will happen. The natural diamonds, HPHT grown tree, CVD grown tree. And uh, you will see in the next, uh, slight simulants. It's not, it, it's claimed uh, to be for simulant as well. Uh, I will tell you my opinion, uh, it's partially true. So how it works, uh, you, you basically have on the side the bar, it is, you compare manually pictures, it's not electronically. So you have this uh, side bar, uh, this is typical color, more blue for natural diamonds, uh, more uh, red, this is easy. You can see how red is very typical for HPHT grown. You have different screens, you have a, a scanning results, and then you can also play with the phosphorescence, the different screens, and compare. Um, 
you can see here, for example, C is a, a layer three, uh, is mostly a green color. One stone did not fluoresce so much. So it is good as long as you know what, what you're comparing and very, very good eye for to, to compare colors. Uh, become more tricky, but is what is good is you can put many trays, many rings at the same time and compare it. This is my uh, rings that I put for uh, mixture. These two stones are natural on the side are CVD. You can see it here in the scanning mode. Hopefully you can see that in, this is blue color, blue color. This is natural on the side, they're more green. So they're CVD. Definitely you can pick up here on the left, uh, HPHT grown uh, synthetic. This one is natural. Uh, and uh, this is how it works. You're comparing the images. Uh, sorry about pictures, but because I didn't have a chance to really uh, do, do it from the system, I did it for, for the screen of the, of the machine. So my opinion, uh, it is good as long as you understand uh, how to use it and be very good at comparing the colors. Uh, for me, a little bit challenging, I think many users uh, to compare Mosonite and CZ, they're claiming here it's more gray and more bluish, uh, CZ, you can see a tiny little bit difference on their screen, but very difficult to see if you have a small uh, stone. So of course you can magnify it and play with this, but for me, I'll always better to check uh, simulants uh, on the microscope or or do other uh, techniques. So it is uh, around five to eight uh, referred undecided and can detect uh, a lot of stones, 15 trays per hour, 20 seconds per tray. It's fast, it's fast. Uh, one uh, or actually two instruments I just received uh, 10 days ago, and I want to thank David, David Skuza from DRC USA for doing this. Uh, and uh, I, I was busy two, three days to, to test all my stones. What is helpful that I could do it uh, in one tray, all loose, and did it here, loose diamonds. Uh, there is a mini one I can show you. Three, four kilograms. Uh, looks. Uh, it's still portable. You can put uh, either uh, rings here. You can put, um, I think, a nine ring. Or the, sorry, this is loose, or rings, and uh, do it uh, at one shot. So, what is this is good about that? Uh, this is a picture from uh, this is one top right is is mini. You can see I just put one uh, most difficult actually stone. It's a CVD diamond that do, do not fluoresce. A uh, small one, uh, many instruments uh, with trick, but this one and it's labeling it. This is a, you can see here around, uh, it's a green around uh, uh, red. It's uh, basically uh, referring to uh, to do one more test, and they have different screens. And this is very important. It's uh, it's digitally circling diamonds. If you saw Sherlock Holmes or other instruments, some of them working on this principle that that program algorithm circle for you. And this is advantage of this. You can see uh, some of them uh, here are loose uh, uh, diamonds on the left. And uh, you can see phosphorescence. They have different screens. First screen is called original that basically uh, identify natural and synthetic. And then you can use these three screens. Uh, they call it photoluminescence, but is really uh, uh, short UV light uh, to us gemologists. There's a fluorescence, which is a long UV light. There's a phosphorescence of short UV. You can play with these screens and see different reactions. So this is, you can see here, for example, this stone uh, phosphoresce here, and it is uh, HPHT grown diamond. On the rings, uh, again, this is the big uh, advantage for manufacturers. Uh, uh, I know some clients in Canada bought it because it's, you can put a lot of rings. You can see, uh, I, I just put my eight and there's a lot of space left. Uh, and uh, you can see here on the right, top right, this is how it looks original mod. You automatically uh, pick up uh, this as uh, definitely uh, synthetic. And this one with further testing. And you can see here also uh, when you circle it like this and it's blinking. Uh, I cannot show the movie, but it's blinking. And you can see here on the left, I put one stone that is definitely HPHT grown and it's how it's uh, circle it. And here's phosphorescence, sorry, photoluminescence. And uh, I put one uh, pink diamond here just for fun. Uh, you can, if you know what it's doing, it, it's basically short UV and long UV light. So these are uh, orange red fluorescence should tell you the diamond is treated if you know gemology, but in this case, they're not claiming they can do color diamonds. They can do colorless diamonds. And this is a D2K. It, it, can do, it takes 45 to 60 seconds per, per sample, but what is good, you can do many rings, 36 rings of one tray. And uh, it tested by a diamond assurance about 96, 97. I, I verified that uh, approximately two to 4% are referring. 
big one is around it's, it's quite heavy around 30 kilograms but it's still good for uh, to put on, on a desktop uh, you can see on the back maybe it's big instrument uh diamond j smart and small one i show it to you uh, right now uh i also put this one on my website and uh, if you want to contact david scusa and his email usa drc techno.com he will uh, give you special deal during this uh, advanced diamond academy five percent off 225 uh, during um, months of april may and june uh, to support uh, uh, academy and uh, you if you want to listen uh, lectures uh, one instrument that is uh, popular in us uh, of course because gaa uh, launched it in a lot of advertising and a lot of and obviously the shows uh, ga behind the brand uh, it's easy to use uh, my uh, issue with this it is basal spectroscopy insight uh, but is referral instrument because why because it will refer stones three to four percent by dpa maybe i'll put three to five and even six uh, because uh, not all uh the refer natural diamonds basically more not only type 2a but those has strange fluorescence i did this test with my stones like orange or yellow to refer for further testing and uh, ga openly uh, promoted this the customer saying the diamond was tested referring and they are usually sending to ga laboratory for further testing so I like to finish with my testing with my instrument. This is me, and I, I like to teach my clients uh, not to send to another lab, even if it's my lab. But of course, uh, if you have a stony question, I would help. Sometimes it's difficult. And that's why we need uh, spectrometers. Uh, one quite portable and quite new. Uh, last year, uh, Gemometrics launched it. Uh, I got it in November, uh, in the beginning, uh, because obviously, new software, new program uh, takes time to get used to it. Now I'm using it more and it's more user friendly and uh, i know what i'm doing it's all a question of practicing uh, he has a two uh, different modes you can do photoluminescence he has a laser 405 and you can do visible spectra between 415 uh, sorry between uh, 400 405 uh, 410 to to 740. why it's important because a lot of uh, important things happening around uh, entry center is the uh, typical for natural diamonds it's called cape lines you can see it in visible spectra or photoluminescence and this is a natural diamond uh, you can do rings uh, as long as the uh, uh, solitaire uh, more complicated for small melee because it's opening uh, but it's designed mostly for loose diamonds and, and solitary rings what i understand what is nice about it you can really use it in gemology uh, for that's why whoever whoever study this academy and really go for all lectures not only mine and Dushan's that we give for free but others from different professors universities thomas henschwagen you can really use it uh, as a tool for detect separate diamonds that is this is a uh, argal diamonds natural diamonds this one is treated he has a the center here 637 and you can easily uh, label it with the system on the bottom is a is a cvd diamond that is a uh, uh, treated and has a, this uh, center 575637, but also uh, is designed for any gemstones. So just to show you, this is a spectral ruby. Uh, it's very important just to know limitations of each instrument. It's a very good instrument, but if you just see a spectral ruby, it doesn't mean it's natural ruby. It could be also synthetic. You have to do further tests, inclusions, uh, fluorescence, and other uh, other things. So uh, that's why every, every instrument should be combined with at least one or two more. This is my advice, but this is very good portable uh under uh, 4000 3900 uh, if you go for me including shipping it's quite fast uh, if you are trained uh, can do imitations can do all colors this is different this is how it looks for example cvd diamond the, the small pick but, but you can magnify the 737 enemy center you can check diamond that is treated this is blue diamond this is a gr1 center very important because your portable uh, little uh, opl or desk models spectrometers cannot go over 700 this is very important to go over 700 to the check check this uh, radiation line so uh, in my opinion again three four percent three percent referred i mean it's never really hundred uh, percent of course it, this is hundred percent if you see this and back up with fluorescence or inclusions it's always good to check with two three instruments but it's very very good uh, uh, gemological instrument so one that I use a lot, and this is one of my favorite, uh, for, I have it for three years, uh, I'm using it for my uh, teaching. Uh, uh, I brought it to Australia in 2018. I, I checked some pink diamonds with this, and, and uh, 
it's portable, it's called EXA. It's passing approximately 98% uh, uh, natural damage, referring 2%. Uh, but if you use the advanced mode, uh, you can really uh, do much more. Uh, that's why uh, I'm doing this uh, advanced academy. I'm costing people like Miko Anstrom, who designed this instrument, uh, will come um, end of May and talk about this instrument and other instruments. Uh, right now, because the euro stronger than US dollars, it was 8,200, now it's 9,200 or more plus shipping. You can get $100 off if you send email to me or Alberto uh, Scarani, who, who is, was very nice to make very, very good uh, videos just released two, three days ago. If you go on YouTube and just search it advanced mode for Coralless Diamonds, XA2, there's XA3, XA1, of course, many different little movies. You can see uh, how to use and uh, the explaining some spectroscopy there. It's very useful for those who has EXA, but those also who are planning to buy. I'm the rep in Canada, and people who ever bought it are very satisfied with EXA, uh, from manufacturers to the retailers and gemologists, of course. Uh, one lab in Montreal bought it. So, how it works? Uh, you can. It's 405 laser. You can see fluorescence immediately. This one is blue. This is good. And then this blue correspond to this entry center 405 and 478. This is what we call Cape lines in this ring. This is natural diamonds. On the other side of the ring, I mix them. There is uh, almost no fluorescence, but a little bit. It's very strong laser, so it has some fluorescence. Uh, you can see here, a uh, little peak uh, close to 900. This is a nickel peak because this is a diamond grown by HPST process with nickel catalyst. And this is HPST grown. And on the right, it's sometimes small, sometimes quite big, uh, depends on the stone producer. 737 is envy, uh, sorry, uh, silicon vacancy, SI v in uh, cvd diamond so it's very good for mounted and loose you can go very fast and uh, also just to give example this is a pink diamond that is treated from my collection how i know is natural because you can see cape lines and here on the left but additional peaks here this is huge band and this 575 envy center causing this uh, orange fluorescence pinkish it's treated pink and then it's an interesting case uh, I put it on Facebook, uh, nobody could guess it, what is the fluorescence of this uh, stone, but fluorescence is very powerful. This is done by jewelry inspector. You can see here one pearl, one coral, and one unidentified stone. It has a very long UV is weak, medium, short UV is strong, orange, yellow. Client bought it as, as a, a yellow sapphires, uh, Indian client, because they like uh, uh, this for astrology. But fluorescence is definitely not natural, and then, X just uh, match it uh, with the CZ, yellow CZ. CZ comes in many colors, and this is spectra different than uh, spectra of coral CZ that has more rare earth elements. So it's good for simulants, good for gemstones, goes down to N color, do I using it also for color diamonds. In the workshops in, for emeralds, you can check uh, even oils and uh, check uh, separate spinels, natural synthetic, very, very useful. We'll talk more about uh, gemstones maybe after summer, uh, if I do uh, manage to continue with this uh, program and do advanced uh, academy on gemstones. Uh, so DPA not tested, the uh, producer said is uh, one to 4%, uh, even 1% if you use advanced mode, I agree. 97% uh, 3% uh, refer could be as low as 1% uh, if you're using advanced mode. Very good for all gemstones. And in the laboratories, uh, not only mine, not only uh, I'm working with GRS on some research project on pink diamonds, you will see this in two weeks uh, about provenance of pink diamonds, how to prove Argyle uh, for Australia, separate from different uh, pinks from uh, South America, Africa, uh, Canada, Russia. Uh, this is a system that approximately 90, 90 to 100,000 dollars. Why? Because it has the two very powerful lasers, uh, 405532, four different channels of visible uh spectroscopy because uh, you can cool it down with liquid nitrogen and take very very fine spectra of course every year this instrument is getting bigger and better this is five years ago sorry not bigger smaller and better and more uh powerful this is one that uh, uh also makes by uh, magic labs from italy and finland that it's need to be used with with the visible and photoluminescence is uh, infrared and we'll talk about this more end of May. Uh, Miko Armstrong will talk about use of infrared for diamonds as well, not only uh, EXA. So I want to uh, pay attention uh, to this chart uh, and go a little bit slower on this because it's a lot of information and uh, uh, many of you saw it. Uh, comes with the comes with the pictures of each of the uh, steps. 
Uh, I did it with John Chapman in 2018 for the GS Symposium. It's a poster. Uh, many of you have it, but if you just leave your email on the landing page of brancogems.com, you'll get free digital poster automatically that you can use it uh, as your reference guide. It's not final answer for all gemstones, of all diamonds, but I'll just show you what we'll show you today. We did have this, this, this group of instruments, I labeled them in, in, uh, in blue that are based on UV transparency. So if it's not transparent, it will go natural on the screen. Uh, it won't do more, but uh, if just tell you natural diamond. So usually like presidium uh, type to a screener, Ari, Gemologis. If it's uh, a transparent, it's type 2A, type 1B, it will refer. So usually you can do two ways. You can go to advanced instruments or you can go to classic gemology. That's why on the website, uh, brancogen.com under instruments, I have this uh, combo logo, combo instruments combination of buying one of these UV screening instrument plus synthetic diamond kit or 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 gem pen or jewelry inspector or pill inspector why because with fluorescence and these you're very very powerful uh, not solving 100 percent but definitely uh, 95 98 percent of the diamonds why because fluorescence is as i mentioned before if long uv is stronger is most probably natural but we can double check it with the birefringence and the cross polarized filters if you see strong interference color anomalous or tatami is natural. If it's uh, non absent, is HPHT grown. If it's columnar, it's CVD. This is what we do, uh, especially in stones, a short QV is stronger. Definitely, we need to check cross polaris filters and do further testing. If it's phosphorescing, is HPHT, sometimes they don't uh, phosphoresce. We need to check cross polaris pattern and other tests. Of course, a loop is very important in microscope. I still look at the microscope for every stone. Sometimes we see these inclusions. We cover all this uh, in our book, Laboratory Grown Diamonds, that you can see metallic inclusions in HPHT grown or, or, or graphite uh, amorphous carbon in a CVD grown. But sometimes all these fail. Uh, no fluorescence, uh, no inclusions, or similar fluorescence. Pattern is very similar, as I mentioned, uh, look like two way, but it's natural CVD. Then we need to do really this advanced uh, testing. And that's why it comes to these instruments like uh, in spectrum uh, and, and, and X, uh, very, very useful. Why? Because, or infrared, uh, because we can check infrared if it's type 2A or not, double check. If it's 1A, it's probably natural. And then if it's spectroscopy, entry center, what is it, 415, uh, it's natural. Silicon, nickel center, synthetic. And there is an instrument that will cover really at the end. Uh, in June, uh, ba based on uh, growth patterns like the, uh, Diamond View and uh, uh, Thomas Henschwagen uh, DFI uh, instrument that goes by growth pattern. This is the final line of defense to see how diamond was growing uh, history, and then we can identify it. So, a lot of information I know, but this is kind of summary with uh, pictures of all instruments. And uh, I put different colors just for you to know this is different uh, producers. This is, for example, uh, Geometrix. This is here, Presidium. This is my company. This is uh, Vista, uh, Hong Kong, uh, GA, Gempen, uh, Dietro Israel, EXA, and two instruments from uh, DRC uh, Techno, uh, J Mini and J, uh, J Smart. So uh, last year, I prepared this lecture for the conference in Greece. Unfortunately, it was uh, canceled. And I have time to add now uh, more instruments. I have at nine, so 12 instruments here. It all depends really on the budget, depends on the, what stones you're testing. Uh, are you testing uh, loose or, or mounted? Are you gemologist or you're not? If you're a retailer, I would uh, recommend more screening instrument. If you're more gemologist, I would recommend more gemological instrument. Uh, if you are a retailer, but don't want, uh, yeah, you can get screening instruments like a GAA, but I prefer to see the spectra and make final conclusion. Uh, this is good for jewelry and a lot of stones. And this is for really those who are into gemology uh, and who wants to detect things. Uh, but you have to a little bit do training. You need some training, like this uh, academy. So how it works uh, at the end? Uh, because I, I promise to compare them. It's not so easy to compare them. Uh, I'm not claiming I did a perfect match, perfect. But I did my best to give my experience on 55 samples using different instruments. So I, I put in five different categories. One is based on visible or photoluminescent spectroscopy, basically mini spectrometer, 
uh, like exa in in spectrum a very close to 100 percent could one two percent refer maybe three uh, or id hundred maybe four because the based on spectroscopy uh, that group of instruments two three four are based on a photoluminescence we call the long uv short uv phosphorescence different filters between long uv and short uv j screen mini screen are quite effective because they're digital and you can magnify uh, area that you are looking compare uh, they can more intensify uh, screen that you can see if non fluorescent diamond has very weak or weak fluorescence that's why it's two to four percent the kit i advise a lot because it's a gemological uh, tool but really combine three instruments maybe four to seven percent experience this is me using it so you have to practice it with the workshops and your own offices or labs a diet through plg inspector gem pen uh, manually is mean you have to compare images either with the uh, published uh, like me and john published this uh, fluorescence of diamonds uh, booklets gem pen has their own booklet dietary has a screen on the side so you need to compare so it is very effective as well five to eight percent in my opinion these instruments who are screening instrument and the, the even name is a screener they're not claiming the identification instrument there may be seven to ten percent uh, referral. Uh, so this is uh, my summary of these uh, twelve instruments in some table that is useful and hopefully meaningful. So to summarize, uh, it really depends on the user and budget. And I strongly recommend uh, to take at least I did an AGS conclave, two hours workshops. It's also useful. Two half days better, or one day is uh, definitely good to take uh, with me or with other people uh, something to do two day workshops one day does diamond treatments one day synthetic and the cgl i'm using really uh, a lot of fluorescence uh, cross polarized filters of course microscope and then go if it's something problem i don't go every every gemstone or infrared photoluminescence visible or exa only those that are suspicious that are a uh, problem and i'm using it a lot because it's fast uh, like exa but also in spectrum is very fast and Mico Alberto mentioned this in the Italian magazine. There is no apparatus based on single technology that allows separation 100%. Dushan Simic and me in our book confirmed that, and we are telling please use two minimum battery three instruments to do your final ID. And we saw a lot of these copies, and hopefully you also have it or you'll get it. It's really a good, useful book for laboratory grown diamonds. It didn't answer all questions, uh, but it uh, it's quite readable. Uh, we get a good review from the Beers as well uh, in the Journal of Gemology. If you go to the magazine, uh, the Beers scientist and uh, Antonot Matlins, uh, who uh, big supporter of webinars, did a nice uh, review. And Rene Newman, uh, one of the two best selling authors of gem books. So uh, this is uh, not only me, it's not only uh, my knowledge, it's covered uh, in many, many articles. Uh, Tit major 29 articles uh, in the last 20 years. Uh, between me and different labs, uh, different universities. Uh, some of these people uh, who published uh, like, uh, uh, like Mikko Armstrong will talk uh, in May, John Chapman already did a lecture from Geometrix. Uh, Zaitsev uh, will do in June, his professor at the University of New York. And Thomas Henschwagen did an article on Chameleon Diamonds. Uh, he will talk as well. And many other people like Manuel Fritsch uh, did beginning with me research. Is my professor of advanced gemology program. This academy is not uh, meant to replace uh, such a program that, that uh, I went there three times a few weeks to study, but is uh, uh, meant to educate you more, to understand you better defects, to understand you better why diamonds for us, uh, this color, and what instruments can do. That's why we do this uh, uh, second or actually third or fourth book. We keep doing it. This is fourth book. We are coming up hopefully by September. Beside myself, uh, talking about uh, uh, portable instruments in detail, I'll do more. I'll talk about also producers of diamonds, uh, new new one that come out after last year book, or maybe get some that are will disclose. And I'll talk about case study with Dushan Simic uh, or samples, a more table that will give you results that I couldn't cover today uh, each uh, technique because there's not enough time. But what I'm very proud to have Dr. Alan Collins, uh, who was a professor at uh, uh, King's College uh, in uh, London, the business advisor. He talked about defects in diamonds. 
Professor Zaitsev, University of New York, still teaching on optical spectroscopy of diamonds. We use his book uh, as a Bible on spectroscopy. And uh, Dr. Tejin Lu from uh, biggest laboratory in China, NGTC, about Chinese static diamonds. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, modern, uh, you can read about modern uh, technology to treat diamonds by a person who did first treatment of multi pink diamonds in 2004, Victor Vince. And of course, Thomas Henschwag, who is making instruments and uh, working the lab, uh, working three labs, he working his own lab. Now for 11 years, I'm CGL. He is in uh, GGTL in Liechtenstein and Switzerland. So all this coming Advanced Diamond Academy. This is the website. You can sign up. This is free to download. Who didn't uh, watch it? It was end of February, uh, like introductory uh, lecture. Just understand the principles by John Chapman, uh, PL Visible uh, Infrared. And John is also editor of this book, uh, an editor of the Metrain Gem Julie Conference, a uh, big support from Perth, Australia. And uh, so this is uh, how it will go. Uh, today we're doing a uh, lecture two. Next Friday, it will be Dushan Simic about HPHT and APH, APHT, what is atmospheric pressure, high temperature treatment of natural and laboratory grown diamonds. It's free lecture like today. And then I will cover color diamonds, especially pinks, because Provenance is very important lately. And on April 29, just after this one week, we'll have a break from uh, Academy. We'll do a webinar on sustainable diamonds. You will get uh, email or it's on the website if you want to sign up round table. Then in May, uh, the fee-based lecture, uh, we are raising money for the book, uh, 39 per lecture, 99 uh, three lectures. Why it's important? Because if you take these uh, three lectures and five free, you can get uh, my certificate uh, of Advanced Diamond Academy. Of course, it's better to have all 10 lectures to listen all eight uh, speakers because it's very different view. What I will tell you, what Victor Vince will tell you, what Ajin Lu or Miko, we, we talk about different topics, but also different angles. Victor Vince is a May 7. Uh, we'll translate uh, from Russian to English. It's a little bit longer, uh, but we'll try to do it uh, within one hour and a half. Uh, Chinese uh, diamonds, May 13. Miko Anstrom will talk not only about X, but other instruments, infrared, visible photomnescence to screen ID diamonds. Very important lecture, uh, May 27. And then uh, we have uh, those who are really into spectroscopy. Many of you uh, did buy some portable instruments or plan to buy uh, portable spectrometers. They're getting down in price. So Dr. Zaitz will talk about this June 4th. Thomas Henschwagen in English and French for those uh, French speaking people, uh, some of them. Uh, prefer, of course, uh, June 11, June 18, how to do by fluorescence imaging and spectroscopy, all advanced spectroscopy. And the last one is June 25th, our close reduction uh, is free one. We will uh, summarize a case study and maybe tell you something more about uh, fifth. We already planning the 2022 fifth edition of the book about uh, 100 diamonds uh, tested with uh, uh, advanced instruments. So. What is important, you'll get eventually uh, by September this book, uh, Diamonds, Natural, Treated and Laboratory Grown, to be released in 2021, hopefully by September, at discount, at least $20 discount, 25% discount. So this is my last slide. And uh, uh, not only that I'm teaching uh, at workshops, I also do this uh, with other people uh, at the uh, Mediterranean German Jewelry Conferences. Uh, uh, Miko and Alberto from Magic Labs uh, supposed to come uh, last year and they couldn't. Uh, we we're supposed to do it uh, this July, uh, but how it looks now in Europe, unfortunately, most probably we need to postpone it for 2022. Uh, but we do have great workshops, not only by them, by, by myself and by other uh, uh, people from UK. And we'll plan to visit the uh, mines in Kosovo, uh, North Macedonia and uh, play with the instruments uh, because now they're portable. So this is a practical part of advanced uh, Diamond Academy and hopefully Gemstone Academy, because we will add the gemstones to this uh, uh, conference, but also to the to the uh, academy uh, end of the year. So, what we'll do now, I will just uh, uh, go back and uh, stop sharing, and uh, I see a lot of questions. Uh, and now is a chance to ask questions. Um, we have a lot of participants from four continents. I'm very happy. Uh, you all came and thank you for support because without you, I couldn't uh, continue with this uh, research and testing and uh, writing books because uh, you give me not only financial, but also moral support. Okay, so 
uh, I see a lot of nice comments in chat. I won't read them, but mostly positive about covering uh, the topic and even people from Sao Paulo saying greetings uh, in Brazil. I was there a few times teaching at the University of Brazil. I have friends there. I did a, a 2007 our book uh, translating in Portuguese because of Brazilian friends. So uh, I will now read some questions and you're welcome to ask more. Um, this is about you and about you having access uh, to me to ask me directly. Um, so I will read all of them and hopefully we will answer them. So some of them ask about a summary or handout of this session. Uh, can you please email to me? Yes, I will do this uh, not only for uh, Katrin uh, Shonke, uh, for other people. Uh, I will thank all of you who, who came today and uh, even those who didn't come, uh, I will send uh, maybe five to 10 uh, slides as a summary, as a PDF file of the instruments because it's important uh, to cover them, maybe 12 slides because the 12 instruments we'll see. Uh, so I will do this. Uh, thank you for reminding me to do this. Okay. So we have a question. what is the most difficult question, but I guess I expect that. If you have to choose one instrument of the ones you tried with, it will be. Now, probably I will get people upset who are 11 other producers, but I cannot lie to you. Uh, if I have to choose one and if I go to the island, maybe one day I, I will be forced to go to the island and choose one instrument. I will probably use uh, out of this what I have behind me and uh, I couldn't lift uh, uh, because it, 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 it's heavy, but probably I will use EXA. It's here. Why? Because it's not only a screening instrument, it's an identification instrument and it's a spectroscopy instrument because you can really put the laser to the stone. Not all stone will, will show typical spectra. Uh, it, it is, of course, it has a limitation, but those who have some fluorescence, some photoluminescence will give you the spectra and you can match it and you can have quite a good idea about identification of the stone. Of course, I would always carry a little loop with me, uh, maybe PL inspector as well. <laughs> so I will cheat a little bit with another two small instruments. But this is a, it is a close to $2,000, but it's good investment uh, because it's uh, one of the final instruments. Uh, again, it's not 100% on its own, but it's one that I would probably choose to go. Okay, this I also expected, uh, but, uh, by Beth uh, Dotti, uh, what do you think of the Sherlock Holmes by Huda? I cannot think too much because I didn't test it. Uh, 